and then we plan to be uh, in, uh, to land, not in the land, but then in the sea, somewhere near to the Indian Ocean. Uh, I mean, uh, near to the Indian uh, territories, maybe on the eastern side of uh, India, in the Bay of Bengal, or to the western side, depending upon the orbit in which you know you are undertaking the new mission. Yeah, here it shows about now what is the major component of this particular mission. The central one is the launcher. Basically, this launcher is nothing different. It is the DSLV Mark III, which has already shown its uh, might in four successful missions earlier. And this particular launcher also has done the 2019 Chandrayaan 2 mission very successfully. And this launcher is now getting converted from mere satellite launch vehicle into the humans, human rated launch vehicle. So for that human rating, basically when we talk about the human rating, you know, always any mission, we talk about the reliability and quality. But then when it comes to human space, the third dimension comes into play, which is called the safety. So naturally, if you want to bring in safety into this mission, you need to make the rocket very rugged. In terms of structural margins, in terms of thermal margins, in terms of the avionics what you have and what not. So these, all these things have already been done for this rocket and then all the systems have been qualified and I can say that the first phase of qualification is completed and the rocket systems are getting realized for really heading towards the mission. And on to the left side, you are seeing the orbital module, which is again, the foreign is about the crew module. This is actually the Earth for the crew, because the crew is going to be inside, it could be one, it could be two, it could be maximum three. And for them, the Earth is the crew, because once you are in the orbit, you are, you are, your crew module has to provide all the needed, uh, you know, the environment within the crew module. And similarly, the life support systems and so on. And at the aft end of the crew module, you see the service module. As the name suggests, it only does the servicing function like propulsion, avionics, power systems, apart from its own uh, other systems, uh, which are part of like a satellite. And on the right side, you see the crew escape system. This is one of the most important components of the whole mission. See, any mission, when you make it, naturally you say that it is very reliable, whether maybe more than 99%. But still, you have always a doubt, because even in an aircraft also, when you go, when you get in, always Eros used to say that because of an emergency, you have an emergency exit doors over there. And then if the craft is going to land in water, you have a water protection system. Like in anything, even in automobiles, we have all those safety gears. Like that, a rocket which is much more complex than any of these machines, naturally, even if it is built to a high reliability, it needs that safety mechanism. Right from the time in which the astronauts or the cadenauts for that sake, when they board the vehicle, till they go to the orbit and till, till they land back safely, this crew escape system must be available. So this system, what you see on the right side, basically it takes care of the total uh, safety of the vehicle as long as it is crossing the atmosphere. And once it crosses the atmosphere, we have another kind of safety mechanism called an orbital module safety system. What it does primarily is that once the vehicle uh, systems are deviating from its path, immediately the vehicle, vehicle has got its own intelligence through its launch vehicle management system, that is health management system, by which it will tell that I am not okay. Once I am not okay, then immediately the, the time will be set for abort. And then immediately the crew escape system, which is at the forefront of the vehicle, will get jettisoned from the vehicle and then it will take away the crew module along with the crew to a very safe distance. So that is the main function of the crew escape system, which also has been now tested and then it is ready for executing certain abort missions. Now, you see here, these are the precursor missions which we have already carried out, like the technologies which are needed for executing this human space mission. Way back in 2007, the spacecraft recovery experiment, wherein a spacecraft was taken to an orbit of 600 kilometers in a PSLV, Pulp Satellite Launch Vehicle in 2007, and in January 2007, and then after a period of about 12 days, that particular body was maneuvered back and then it landed in the eastern part of India and that was called as an eventually body. First time we are getting a body back from the orbit. So wherein we have proved the re-entry technology, especially with regard to the thermal production systems. Similarly, in 2014, the CARE experiment, that is the crew module atmospheric re-entry experiment, wherein a similar size crew module, what we are now talking about, was taken to an altitude of 160 km by the TSLV Mark III, which otherwise is called the Fat Boy to an height of 160 km where it was deployed and thereafter the CAR, the, uh, the crew module, had headed its way back to the air, air very safely. There again we have proven the re-entry technology, the precise re-entry navigation and precise uh, uh, injection, I mean, precise test down near the location that we predicted. Similarly on the right side you see the crew escape system which I was just mentioning some time back. This also through a demonstration of pad about test means that when you are in the launch pad, 
when the crew is entering the vehicle, very 80 minus 2 hours before the launch, and till T0, uh, that is the time at which the launch takes place from the Sri Harikota launch pad. During that time, something happens to the vehicle. Maybe a fire would have happened to the launch pad, and there is no time available for the two crew to, to, to come out. Then immediately, you know, he has to escape from the vehicle. And this particular demonstration has already been done in 2018, wherein a crew escape system was fired, and then it has taken the crew module to a distance of something like three kilometers from the pad and safely ejected the crew module over there. So these are the precursor the technologies that we have already proven, but this is not enough. We have many more new technologies. It has been summarized here on the launcher we said that it has been human rated and then it has got a launch vehicle health management system and intelligence is already sitting in the launch vehicle will test which tells the launch vehicle that or which tells that i'm okay or not depending upon that the crew escape system will be driven away from the crew module from the launcher and then heading the crew module to safety Similarly, on the orbital module also, aero thermodynamics is very important. When you are coming back after the separation of the service module, the crew module, when it is making its way back to the earth, it has to be very precisely manoeuvred so that its Aston, that is called the dough, is heading the aerodynamic flow. And then the powerful thermal protection system takes care of the crew module, maintaining the temperature inside to 23 plus minus 3 degrees, while the outside temperature is something like 2000 degrees. So that is very, very critical. And similarly, the end to end mission. Because here the payload is none other than the crew members. And when you are there in the rocket, and as the rocket is climbing to the altitude, and when it is coming back, you know, there are a lot of loads imparted to the crew. Because the, axle, the, the vehicle that which is, it is moving is at a very high acceleration. Something like 4G. 4G means if you are having a mass of weight of 60 kilograms, you will be feeling that you are having 60 into 4 to 40 kilograms. Similarly, when you are coming back, also you will have a similar kind of, you know, the loads which will be acting on your body. And forget about if there is an abort during the ascent phase, the kind of acceleration or the deceleration that is going to happen to you is something like 12G to 20G. Means it is like a 60 kg man will feel like, or a 60 kg lady will feel like 1200 kg. Just imagine about that. You are carrying 1200 kg on your head. How do your bones and the other things will feel? So, this is the kind of load that is going to act on the human, and our mission should be designed in such a way that all these loads should be well within the capability of the human. That is where it is called the physiological limit we need to ensure that. So, this is how the mission is also designed. And on the last segment is basically the crew life support system. As I mentioned earlier, the crew module is going to house the crew in, in the orbit and then this crew module should have the atmosphere inside. The cabin pressure is very, very important because there is no atmosphere outside in the orbit, you know, it's all vacuum and outside temperatures are also like minus 150 degrees centigrade and 2 plus 1 for 200 degrees centigrade. But inside, you need to maintain 23 plus minus 3 degrees with a cabin pressure of something like 1, you know, 100 kilopascal or 1 atmosphere pressure. This is all done by life support system, which is a new technology altogether and all these things are being designed indigenously, of course, with the help of all our industrial partners. So these are all very few critical technologies I have mentioned. Otherwise, if, if I need to talk about it, I need more time. So just, uh, we will just uh, see how this mission we are going to achieve that. Is it that ISRO is going to do that? As Chair has already said, it is the program across the nation that is called the Pan India. Not only Pan India, it is also spread across the world. We have the national collaboration, we have the international collaboration. You see on the left side, the national collaboration, all the institutions are there, all the academy is there, whether the IITs, IACs, IIMs, all those people are there. Similarly, Hundreds of industries are participating in our program, something like 300 to 400 industries. And all those armed forces are there, Indian Army, Indian Air Force, and Navy, Indian Coast Guard, and similarly all the DRDO, the various kinds of DRDO units are there. Of course, a couple of expert panel members are also available over here. So similarly, on the international collaboration also, we have with the JSC, uh, Black Coast Coast Russia, and also with the Australian Space Agency over here. Anyway, one uh, panelist is also here, where we are seeking the support of, you know, the tracking the launch vehicle when it is ascending. We need a place to keep our uh, uh, transportable terminal, so that we have found a place for something called Cocos Island, which is actually belonging to the Australian government. Already, we have a collaboration with them, and similarly with the European Space Agency, Amazon Web Services, and whatnot. So it is something like a national and international collaboration with which we are going forward for achieving this human space mission. And coming to the last, you just see how we are going to achieve this problem. This, as already mentioned, 
C2, validate all these things are very important. As I mentioned, crew safety is the most important thing. Anything you do, just like that will not get accepted. We have got a certification board sitting over there. So they will ask, in fact, what are the various demonstrations and the crew safety related tests that you have performed. And we need to show it by record, not by just talking. So we carry out all these things through very uh, uh, exhaustive ground tests and also through a low cost test vehicle missions. That is what already it has been told that you know the crew safety during the ascent phase if at all something happens to the vehicle at any point in time yeah if something happens to the vehicle you need to jettison from there and you need to come back safely how you are going to demonstrate that that is going to be demonstrated through a low cost test vehicle mission where we will have multiple missions like that where we will simulate very critical mission conditions and then we will jettison the crew escape system and take the crew module to safety this also we need to demonstrate and before we head in to, for, towards the manned mission you know we need to carry out two identical unmanned missions without man and it has to be identical in all respects with respect to the launcher, with respect to the orbital module with respect to the crew escape system with respect to the, all the ground paraphernalia which is required for the communications and all other things have to be like a manned mission only thing, man will not be there but then there will be some other payloads so once you do that, yes you are ready for taking a man so that time is not far off, it is going to come soon we are going to have test vehicle missions in a couple of months followed by unmanned mission probably at the end of next year which will be followed by another couple of unmanned missions and then the final the manned mission so we will wait until then maybe with all these uh, collaborations what we have with all the industries the startups, uh, in fact I forgot to tell about one startup company who are making the green propulsion Green propulsion system, uh, it's very nice that's thought over there. Only thing they have to optimize with regard to the, the catalyst test, I mean, uh, bed, what they are making, the power that is consuming is slightly is on the higher side, that they need to cut it down. In that case, you know, we can always find it useful for the Gaginian mission. There are many startups are also coming forward to give certain uh, products for the Gaginian mission. So I think uh, the time is up and that we are ready. We will be ready for this Gaginian mission in a couple of years from now and we will soon we'll be taking boarding our own Indian brother or sister to take them uh, to an orbit and then safely bring them back. Probably after that we will have people from abroad also wanting to go in our Gaginian mission. Thank you very much.